We are the anchors of Queer News Tonight, and this evening we discuss the queer headlines. Lauderdale Tropical Bear Week in Fort Lauderdale in Wilton Manors offers a six-day extravaganza. You don't want to miss it. It's the ultimate bear experience. We're going to tell you every exciting detail. Join Pride Skate Nights at Extreme Action Park's Arena Roller Rink on March 7th. Enjoy music, guest performances, and support Stonewall Pride. Fans celebrate iconic moments from RuPaul's Drag Race, from Gia Gunn's remarks to dramatic eliminations. Gay social media is on fire. Will you agree with our choices? Navigating intimacy involves understanding LGBTQ plus slang. Communication is key to embracing desires and developing satisfying connections. We talk about hypocritical conservative Republicans who did not practice what they preached, leading to scandals, revelations, and even some ending up lobbying for gay rights. Wait, what? Good evening and welcome to Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only LGBTQ plus daily evening television news, broadcasting live and available on demand on all of your smart televisions, including Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch, and YouTube. Uh, it's time to queer up the news for Thursday, February 29th, 2024. We are live and literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we're going to tell this evening on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor at Queer News Tonight, Dr. Ty Hauser. This evening, we bring you the news of and perspectives representing the LGBTQ plus community from South Florida, America, and across our planet. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ plus evening news show. Whatever happens unique in LGBTQ plus news, you're going to see it and hear it. Hotspots Magazine Happening on Television Network is a nonprofit 501c3 media company in the same model of PBS and NPR, but designed for the LGBTQ plus community. Our mission? To support the 10 pillars of our LGBTQ plus community. We want to inform and educate the key issues of our black community, Latino, lesbians and queer women, trans, students, youth, seniors, HIV AIDS healthcare, business, social justice, and faith. Help us support our community. We are part of one of the largest LGBTQ plus nonprofit media companies in America, Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network. In 2024, our magazine is celebrating 40 years of the LGBTQ plus experience and our television news, talk and entertainment shows support our mission to educate the LGBTQ plus and broader community. Let's start off the night by meeting our anchors for Queer News tonight. Uh, let's welcome our first anchor, Dr. Julio Capo Jr. My favorite words to say Yay! are Dr. Julio Capo Jr. Aww, <laughs> a board member of the Stonewall National Museum, Archives, and Library. He's a history professor at Florida International University and the author of the book, Welcome to Fairyland, Queer Miami Before 1940. Julio, I see you also have uh, an exhibit that you curated and it's opening up. There's going to be a special reception yes. and stuff at the Stonewall Museum. What's I am going on? So excited. I'm curating a new exhibition that opens March 28th at the Stonewall National Museum and Archives in Florida. Um, it's called Zarita Takes Miami. She's an incredible, uh, she was a lesbian burlesque dancer uh, in the 1940s and 50s and 60s. She passed away in 2001. I've been writing about her for years and I recently came across, I met uh, her daughter, um, who's shared so many of her, her stories and archives with us, Tawny Patillo. And this story is just, it's become such a passion project because she was such a badass. <laughs> like, I mean, just pushing boundaries in ways that, um, you know, I think could really inspire us today as we think about new ways of, of um, resisting. So Zarita, mm -hmm. incredible woman. Um, can't wait to tell her story. Oh, that sounds exciting. Yeah. I look forward to it. Thank you. Uh, next. Let's welcome anchor Greg Shapiro. Greg's ninth book, Refrain in Light, was selected for the Poetry Mutual 10 Best Poetry Books of 2023. His entertainment coverage, including celebrity interviews, runs in a variety of print and online 
online publications. Uh, Greg, I understand the out lesbian singer-songwriter Sammy Ray will be doing an outdoor beach concert uh, at the Miami Bandshell. Uh, what is it, March 1st? What's going on? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Do you have something for us? I'm very excited. Oh, look at that. Uh, to be losing my virginity on two <laughs> fronts. I will be attending my first concert at the Miami Beach Band Shell. Ooh. And that concert will be the first time I get to experience Sammy Ray and the Friends in a live show. I'm, and she is a queer singer-songwriter, better known as uh, Sammy Ray Bowers. She's a real belter. And if this album from last year is any indication, it will be an unforgettable evening. Nice. Nice. And every time I hear Miami Beach Band Show, I think about you and Sophia Petrillo hanging out. <laughs> Down a, never. Right. I'll, like bring, I'll bring snacks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our lead anchor for Queer News Tonight is Dr. Ty Hauser. Yes. He is a professor of English and Humanities at Broward College and teaches in the College of Business at Florida Atlantic University, FAU. He has served as visiting professor at colleges in Bolivia, in Brazil, China, India, and Spain, and provides an international viewpoint. Ty owns Linden Bridge, an educational experience company. Ty, a big event happening at FAU, I here yes, yes, at yes. the Palm Beach Book Festival, March 16th. Tell us more about it. March 16th. So not only are they celebrating my birthday, yes, in case we didn't know, birthday. my birthday is, is the 15th. That's the real celebration. So that's it. Uh, on the 16th, they have um, a, a huge day of events. Uh, the capstone, of course, is uh, my favorite author and who I did a lot of my research on when I did my dissertation. Joyce Carol Oates Ooh. will be receiving the uh, Lifetime Honoree Award. Uh, also, they have a discussion with Annie Hall and Brandon Wolf called Coming of Age in Florida, Tragedy, mm -hmm. Triumph, and mm -hmm. LGBTQ+. Brandon Wolf is an incredible speaker. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's going to be a great conversation, yeah, I think. Everyone's an incredible speaker. Uh, also, Lauren Groff and Barry Ooh. Sonnenfeld will be there uh, as well. That sounds so good. So get know. yourself up to FAU for the Palm Beach Do it. Book Festival on March Do 16th. Nice. We're the reporters for Queer News Tonight, and this evening we begin with our queer headlines. The LGBTQ plus community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast, and here are the bullet points for Queer News for today. Thursday, February 29th, Happy Leap Year 2024. <laughs> Next, let's queer up South Florida and Florida. Lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my, Lauderdale Tropical Bear Week arrives. One of the signature LGBTQ plus bear events in North America is getting ready to launch in Fort Lauderdale. Get ready to dive into the ultimate tropical bear experience as Lauderdale Tropical Bear Week takes over Fort Lauderdale and Wilton Manors March 5th through the 10th. This emerging bear event intentionally uses the words tropical in its name. That's because while the rest of the nation endures near zero temperatures in March, Fort Lauderdale and Wilton Manors is, well, practically perfect in every way. <laughs> the weather is great. Thus, tropical for the bear world is in March and we all emerge from hibernation. Partnering with Gay Ocho, this six-day extravaganza guarantees non-stop fun with a lineup of thrilling events. Here are the signature events, including a high-energy Bears in the Park party, featuring special guest Big Dipper. There are three pool party events, including a VIP kickoff at Solstice in Wilton, Tropical Splash with Flock Fest, and the closing with Tsunami, hosted by Scruff at Ed Lugo, Ed Lugo Resort. I, of course, am very excited about the Jungle Bear Cruise on the iconic Jungle Queen Riverboat. Uh, major entertainment names performing include the iconic dance queen Crystal mm. Waters and world-famous live performance comedic drag queen, I love her, Varla Jean Merman, who's also famously a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Music is front and center with DJs like adult film director icon Chi Chi LaRue, Drew Sebastian, and many, many more. Tropical is delivered to the nation when we go to the Camo Beach Party at Birch State Park featuring a VIP bar. Lauderdale Tropical Bears is the brainchild of the Eagle Wilton Manor's owner, Chuck mm -hmm. King. Queer News Tonight noticed that Chuck is working with so many LGBTQ plus brands, including other South Florida bars. It's demonstrating how important this event is to our entire community. Passes start at $119, but you can be a VIP for $319. Individual party tickets are also up for sale. You can visit LauderdaleTropicalBear.com for event details. The barest party in the city is finally here. <laughs>
Uh, so this is going to be a fun event. I always look forward to this. Um, I have a good time. I'm not necessarily part of the bear community, but I definitely come out and do my cubbing about. Oh, nice. <laughs> I guess I'm too old to be a that's, cub, though. That's nice. No, I mean, it's really going to be fun. I think I'm actually most looking forward to Varla Jean Merman and Crystal Waters, Crystal Waters. at Richardson Park on Mon March 9th. And you can read my cover story interview with Ooh. Crystal Waters in the current issue of All South Florida, as the kids say, on stand now. Oh, I want to read that. I love, I have to, I mean, this, all bear parties are the best parties. Like, they just throw the best parties. They're always the best spaces. They're always, like, Bear Week at P-Town is always the best week. Like, that is, like, it's, it's, people are nice. But it's people... got nothing against Bear Week here. Right. No, no. no. that's right. No. What I mean is like bare spaces. And like, yeah. I'm so excited that we see that now here. Cause yeah. There's yeah. just it, there's such a great support system here. And this is the kind of this, I, I'm, I'm excited for this. Yeah. too. This is just the kind of. <laughs> yeah. Not to compete with Pete. Though, <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> okay. Next, let's queer up South Florida and Florida. Forget King Cake. Skate with a queen at Pride Night on March 7th at Extreme Action Park. Get ready to roll into Mardi Gras at Pride Skate Nights. Mark your calendar for Thursday, March 7th to be in the arena roller rink at Extreme Action Park. Part of the Hotspots Magazine Happening Out television network nonprofit LGBTQ media group, Pride Skate Nights promises fun for all ages while supporting the Wilton Manor Stonewall Pride Parade and Street Festival. The event also features music by DJ T Pro Mix and special guest performances by Divas Velvet. Lenore and Rihanna Patron. You can secure your spot at the event by pre-purchasing a general entry ticket at $15, which includes skate rental or go VIP for $25 and receive two free beers or wines. Stonewall Pride Skate Nights are not just about fun, although that's certainly too, they also give back. $5 from every ticket sold directly supports the Stonewall Pride and Festival. This iconic event held in June in Wilton Manors attracts over 50,000 attendees and celebrates the LGBTQ community. So lace up your skates and attend this night of celebration, community and pride. Pride Skate Nights are organized on the first Thursday of every month. For further details and ticket purchases, visit ExtremeActionPark.com. Um, I have to say, I know a number of, uh, this excites me to no end. I love skating yeah. and I love, I love these kind of things in general. Like it's just something to do and, and like whatever. And a bunch of my softball mates and I, like we, we go to these things all the time and we go as a group and as a team and it's just so much fun. It's ever, it's always a good time. I always give it my best effort, but without fail, I am the worst Aww. roller skater in history. As a teenager, I feel like I was really, really good. So well, you can just now go. I'm old. Oh, no, I'm the same. But like, you can just go and enjoy the music. Yeah, it is a right. lot of fun. There's something right. about that space and the music and they the vibe. It's big, for it's sure. Big. Well, to quote the late great Melanie, "I got a brand new pair of roller skates. Ah. You got a brand new key. I think we should get together and try them out. You see, <laughs> I love it. Next, let's clear up drag culture. Fans decide the craziest moments ever of RuPaul's Drag Race. As RuPaul's Drag Race continues to captivate audiences worldwide, fans are reminiscing over some of the most unforgettable and chaotic moments from the show's history. From viral X Twitter posts to ongoing seasons like US Season 16 and the UK vs. the World Season 2, the drag community celebrates the wild antics that have graced our screens. Among the fan favorite moments are Gia Gunn's iconic comments, Drag Race Thailand's magical mishap with Srimala's wand, and the dramatic elimination of Jan in Drag Race history. From Cornbread's shocking offer to Jessica Wilde's bold reading challenge insult, each moment has left an indelible mark on Drag Race lore. Fan choices also include moments with notable guest judges like Aubrey Plaza, and memorable runway critiques from Michelle Visage have added to the show's legendary status. Even RuPaul's hilarious moments from the Coffee Enema episode to the unprecedented idea of lip sync showdowns have become part of Drag Race history. As RuPaul's Drag Race continues to push boundaries and redefine reality TV, 
Fans eagerly anticipate what wild moments the new seasons hold, whether it's unexpected twists, draw-dropping runway looks, or iconic one-liners. RuPaul's Drag Race proves that the magic of dra drag knows no bounds. It literally has become a central moment of queer culture. <laughs> well, I have to say, for me, the craziest and kind of proudest moment is that a fellow Emerson College alum, oh. Randy Barbado, is one of the creators of the multi-award winning RuPaul's Drag Race oh. through his World of Wonder uh, company, uh, to which there appears to be simply no end of possible configurations. I mean, just when you think, like, RuPaul's done it all, right. she comes out with something else. So now we have, <laughs> we have this new, this new venture. I, but, I mean, it is. It's and a culture. memoir. She has a memoir coming yes. out yeah. that I'm yes. so excited for. <laughs> Talk about getting red. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't get it at first. <laughs> okay. Next, <laughs> let's clear up gay culture. <laughs> gay culture means understanding what the term verse means to the LGBTQ plus community. Imagine you've been on a date and are ready to take things to the next level. Then your partner asks the sometimes deal-breaking question, are you a top, bottom, or verse? Depending on who you are, this question can mean different things. For gay men, these terms are almost always in reference to penetrative sex. A top is the one who penetrates, a bottom is the one who is penetrated. And a verse or versatile person can enjoy either. Some people also use the term side to refer to those who do not like penetrative sex. For other members of the community where penetration may not be part of the intimacy, the term can mean something slightly different. In non-penetrative sex or as part of a BDSM dynamic, BDSM meaning bondage, domination, sadism, and masochism, a top is the person in control. A bottom is the more submissive and averse means able to fill either role. In these situations, the term switch is frequently used instead of verse, as the role tends to not be as dynamic in a BDSM scene as it is in a traditionally sexual scene. Understanding these terms fosters open communication and respect in intimate relationships, allowing individuals to express their desires authentically. Whether you identify as top, bottom, or verse, communication is always key. Embrace open dialogue to ensure mutual understanding and satisfaction with partners rather than conforming to rigid labels. It's about honoring individuality and fostering fulfilling connections. Uh, and I think that's really what it's all about, isn't it? It's about uh, getting to know your partner, yeah. uh, understanding yourself as well as understanding your partner and, and, and experiencing that joy that love brings to you. Yeah. And yeah, well, I personally, I think we've gone from bad to verse, but oh, and I just want to also mention that verse rhymes with purse, which, as many of us in the community know, that sometimes that's what falls out of the mouth of some of the hottest and most well hung muscle guys, sequins, poppers, and all. <laughs> I mean, I, I, what I find so interesting about this story is that it's a story. And I, and what I mean by that is like, I wonder how many people really don't know this. And like, uh, and like, I kind of love the, that we're, we're sharing this with a bunch of folks. Also, just to add nuance to it, there's, there's dom tops, there's fem tops, there's, yeah, you know, right. a power bottom who's definitely the one in control, to be very clear. Um, <laughs> like, that is like, you know, when little Nas X I talked feel about like being I just a learned power. Something about <laughs> not about. <laughs> <laughs> that's between me and my partner. Okay. Uh, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> I mean, it is actually. I'm not uh, <laughs> no, no, it really is. It, it really, really is. is. But no, like, you know, I love when little Nas X came out as a yeah. bottom, he was like, uh uh, but a power bottom. Like, that is like, there's yes. like multiple um, ways that you can exist in this kind of, you know, hierarchy or whatever. Right. Not hierarchy, like a spectrum or something. I don't know. More uh, letters for the LGBTQ. Yeah. Plus. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> lots of fun things to share. <laughs> we all learn something about ourselves. <laughs> Next, let's queer up politics. Hypocrisy. Here are the 10 moments of Republicans caught in gay sex scandals. Much of the GOP and evangelicals preach hate against the LGBTQ plus community. However, the list is long of allegedly hypocritic conservative Republicans who have been accused of not practicing what they preach. The most current example starts with Bridget Ziegler, co-founder of Moms for Liberty, 
who opposes LGBTQ plus inclusion in schools, but admitted to threesomes with her husband and another woman. Matt Schlapp, chair of the American Conservative Union, faces sexual assault allegations from a male staffer. Representative Wes Goodman champions traditional marriage while engaging in same-sex encounters. Republican Senator Larry Craig pleaded guilty to soliciting sex in the men's restroom at the Minneapolis airport, resulting in his resignation. George Reckers, a co-founder of the Re Family Research Council, hired a male escort contradicting his anti-gay stance. He was exposed by CNN. Evangelical pastor Ted Haggard faced accusations of drug use and sexual misconduct with male escorts. Mark Foley, a former Florida representative, sent explicit messages to underage congressional pages revealing same-sex attractions and hypocrisy. John Henson, a conservative U.S. representative from Mississippi, faced a restroom arrest for oral sodomy. He later embraced his sexuality, advocating for LGBTQ plus rights uh, until his death in 1995. Former Republican U.S. Representative Robert Bauman was charged with seeking sex from a 16-year-old male sex worker in 1980. Later, he lobbied for gay rights, shifted to Wilton Manors, but still voted for Republicans. Perhaps the winner on the list is Jim uh, Baker, a known name in conservative households in the 80s who was accused of sexual assault by Jessica Hahn, a church secretary. ABC News then reported about Jim's same-sex sexual encounters. His wife, Tammy Faye Baker, became an iconic faith-based champion of LGBTQ plus rights. That list is long, y'all. And um, <laughs> having just read it all myself. Um, and you know what? I mean, there's there's uh, one of the things that I always find so kind of powerful about these kinds of stories that it it's um, it, it it provides room for growth. Right. Like that is like it, it tells us the power of, of what the closet does to people. Right. Oh, what sure. does shame and stigma do? What repression looks like and how it really because a lot of it is self-loathing. A lot of it kind of finds hatred outward because it's coming from inward. Right. Um, all sorts of I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that that's everybody. And there's there's nuances in all these stories. And then there's I also want to clarify there's moments here where we're talking about underage things, which is I don't want to conflate with LGBTQ. I think that's really important, too, right. that we kind of suggest that right. but but you know self hate you know self-loathing is 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 real y'all like and i mean I like, that's that's kind of where that's kind of where the conservatives have the corner is that mm -hmm. that idea of shame yeah. is what they're constantly trying to make everyone feel and by the way we missed uh we missed a name on there aaron shock was uh, as oh, well, right. yeah. a very right good one to have on yeah, there right sure um but but that idea of of constant shame and and um repression mm -hmm. uh and this is how it manifests yeah. itself right. not that the left is without its scandal of course no yeah. obviously no. the left has yeah but they don't uh, materialize in the same way. Well, and they're also not preaching things. That's the thing. That's the difference. These people are preaching things. It's it is self-loathing, hypocrisy, religious zealotry. Yeah. It's political indoctrination and so societal and cultural pressures. All these things combine, and it's too much for some people. I'm talking to you, Ziegler and Schlapp. <laughs> and let's not forget there's another name left off the list. Mr. Room Temperature Vanilla putting himself. Good old Denny Hastert. Oh, geez. Shame on all of you. Mm. Exactly. Next, we're proud of our special partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. Supporting that partnership, we're broadcasting from our permanent set here at Sunshine Cathedral at the Happening Out Television Studios. We broadcast Sunshine Cathedral's Sunday international service at 10.30 a.m.
We finish tonight's queer news headlines with a segment we call LGBTQ Plus One Minute News. LGBTQ Plus One Minute News. Let's queer up entertainment. Ryan Murphy has a new horror drama, Grotesquerie, with Nisi Nash. Ryan Murphy, the creative mastermind behind hits like Pose, unveils his new project, Grotesquerie, featuring Nisi Nash Betts. Alongside Nash Betts, the horror drama stars Courtney B. Vance and Leslie Manville. Murphy teased the series on Instagram in a recent post, hinting at a chilling tale set to premiere on FX this autumn. While details remain scarce, anticipation mounts for this thrilling addition to Murphy's repertoire. Nash Betts will be honored with the prestigious Stephen F. Kolzak Award at the 35th GLAAD Media Awards on March 14th. This honor recognizes her impactful contributions to LGBTQ plus visibility and acceptance. Queer News Tonight will bring all the updates on Grotesquerie and the GLAAD Media Awards to you. LGBTQ plus one minute news, let's queer up gay culture. Photographer Chantis Parks shows through pictures the value and joy of LGBTQ plus. Renowned New York City based gay photographer Chantis Parks is celebrated for capturing the vibrancy of alternative NYC nightlife and LGBTQIA plus communities. With Recognition from platforms like Mass Collab Media and The Advocate, Parks Photography celebrates queer joy and resilience, challenging norms and fostering inclusivity. Collaborating with Folsom Street Fair and acclaimed events, he amplifies the voices of BIPOC and marginalized LGBTQ plus individuals. Parks' ongoing pursuit of opportunities to document events reflects his unwavering dedication to storytelling and the queer community representation. Currently, this talented gay voice is seeking venues for an exhibition and finalizing a coffee table book. You can learn more at Chantis Park social media. LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up gay culture. George Platt Lines and Early Days of Gay Photography explores our world. Explore the captivating world of photographer George Platt Lines, renowned for his stunning portraits of the male form. His work, characterized by its eroticism and stark beauty, captures the essence of queer intimacy. Lines' photos, often tastefully nude, exude confidence and celebrate the male body in all its glory. With a career spanning the 1930s and 40s, Lines paved the way for LGBTQ plus representation in art long before it was widely accepted. Today, his work remains a testament to his pioneering spirit and serves as a reminder of the beauty and power of queer expression. Take a look. LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up the world view. Now a Canadian town bans gay by public vote. Residents of Westlock, Alberta, Canada, have made a divisive decision regarding the display of flags and the presence of a pride-painted crosswalk in their town. It is the community's only public embracement of the LGBTQ plus community. By a narrow margin of 663 to 639, voters opted to restrict municipal buildings to flying only federal, provincial, and municipal flags while removing the rainbow-colored crosswalk from the front of City Hall. The vote followed a petition calling for, quote, neutrality in public spaces. Despite the outcome, Mayor John Kramer reaffirmed the council's commitment to equity and inclusion, pledging continued support for marginalized groups in alternative ways. LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up entertainment. Netflix special Gender Agenda will feature queer, I'm sorry, will feature gender queer comics hosted by Hannah Gatsby on March 5th. Get ready for the hilarious Netflix special Gender Agenda, hosted by Hannah Gadsby. Featuring an ensemble of genderqueer comedians, the show promises to deliver uproarious laughter. Directed by Julian Smith, Gender Agenda aims to address the lack of representation for genderqueer comedians on major streaming platforms. The show is filmed at the prestigious Alexandra Palace Theatre in London. The LGBTQ plus community is excited about the show, which will premiere on Netflix on March 5th. And that is today's news for the LGBTQ plus community on the world's first and only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show. 
If our community is important to you, and we know it is, share this news with your friends and family. Are you, like most of America, part of our very large television audience watching this live LGBTQ plus news broadcast right now on Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and Amazon Fire TV? Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ plus digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. If our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. This is the only place in the world that tells these types of LGBTQ plus stories in motion and sound. That is the passion of Hotspots Magazine, Happening Hour Television Network, and Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor at Queer News Tonight, Dr. Ty Hauser, and on behalf of these LGBTQ plus reporters, the anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Dr. Julio Capo Jr. and Dr. Greg Shapiro, <laughs> I'm Dr. Ty Hauser, and we will see you daily at 8 p.m. And to our LGBTQ plus world, we wish you a very good, good night. night. Good night.